Becoming a freelancer sounds like a great idea. In theory, you can work whenever you want to instead of living that mundane nine to five life. Plus, you can take a day off or just straight up a vacation without begging a cold hearted company for a break and possibly paying for that break in some way in the future. On top of that good stuff, you can set your own prices. Instead of a company telling you how much you're gonna make every week or two, you tell someone how much you're gonna get. Maybe your boss will give you $500 a week. With freelancing, you can complete two jobs for 500 big ones in less than a week. Also, you can work from anywhere. You can meet your client at a Barnes and Nobles or a coffee shop. Or even communicate through email and never meet the person anywhere. Which of course means you'll save gas and work on the project on your computer in bed without even changing out of your PJs. Wait, what? Gross. Oh, and let's say you have a full-time job at Chick-fil-A. You'll be able to freelance around your set in stone waffle fry tossing schedule. Man, I love those fries. Well, yeah, who doesn't? Anywho, that's the beauty of being a freelancer. But there's an ugly truth waiting for you on the other side. First of all, you're starting from nothing. There's no company backing you up. There's no brand name that people already know and love to open doors for you. Nobody knows you. This is coming from an artist's perspective, but certainly this applies to other fields of work. Half of your job now is to acquire business, build a clientele, all on your own. The people at your old job that used to do all that schmoozing and chit chat with the fat pocket clients is all on you now. And if you're not social, it's time to get social. That means constantly surfing Instagram, Twitter, and maybe even Craigslist for opportunities to sell your twerk. I mean, work. I mean, talent? No, definitely your work. Yeah, you heard me. Even Craigslist. Ow. Don't meet up with any of those people alone at night. Those people? Why? Yes, those huh? people. Well, if all those options aren't percolating your business, and yes, you're now a business, then there's always word of mouth. Oh, yeah. Mm, good old fashioned word of mouth. That means you're counting on your mom having a friend who wants a cute little drawing for their Facebook icon, and then maybe she'll give you 50 bucks, but she'll get it to you after she get paid next week. Yeah, or you deal with certain deadbeats who <laughs> act like legit clients but end up wasting your time and never paying you. <coughs> so, getting back on track here. Then there are those freelancing websites that are allegedly there to help you out. They're trash. In our humble opinion, you're honestly just competing against people in your field for the lowest price. Think about that. No matter how great or hard you work to perfect your skills, those clients will pass you up because they can easily see another freelancer will charge less, criminally less. Then you're also competing against people who've been on the site way longer and are already established with great ratings plus excellent comments, including recommendations. Aw, look at your cute little profile that you made nine minutes ago. Precious. That all being said, let's really break down the money and the realities of art commissions. Firstly, it's tough deciding what you should charge for your work because it's difficult finding out what the going rate is for someone in your area of your skill level. If you ask for too much, then you risk losing the client. And if it's not enough, then you'll definitely regret it. Trust us, you'll regret it. Think about it. Let's say you are commissioned to paint someone's portrait. Now perhaps you're unsure what to charge, so you go with 10 bucks. But have you even taken into consideration how long it would take you to paint that portrait? Let's pretend the minimum wage is $10 an hour. If you work a nine to five, then that's an eight hour workday. Multiply $10 an hour by your eight hour shift and you made $80 for the day. So going back to the $10 painted portrait, if it takes you eight hours to paint a sufficient portrait, then that means you just worked a whole workday for only $10, which working for $1.25 an hour is a huge worker's rights violation. Thinking of it that way now, if you decide that you're a $10 an hour artist, and it would take you perhaps five hours to complete the painting, then maybe you should charge $50 instead of $10. Oh, and have confidence. People will act weird when it comes to paying you anyway because a lot of people still don't see art as a real job. Plus, you don't work for a company, so all of the benefits you get from a job, you have to cover that. The kids gotta eat too. Um, okay then. 
Well, the moral of the story is be cautious about becoming a freelancer and do your research, but don't get discouraged if it's what you really want to do. Hmm. Well, yeah, and learn about contracts. As always, thanks for watching. And if you really want to help us out, make sure you like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our links. We just opened a new store. Till next time.